Hello. So today I'm going to be continuing the Learn to Love Sudoku series. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, but either way, uh, this is lesson two, and we'll be learning about tuples and pointing, which I'll, of course, be going over in detail. And then after that, I'll be going through two puzzles that demonstrate the use of tuples and pointing. They require them in order to solve. And I also, if you look down below, I will have links to the two puzzles that I'm going to be solving, so you're welcome to try them out first if you want. And in addition to that, I have 18 more puzzles that are just like them that will require the use of today's lesson in order to solve them. And so just putting that all out front so that you know what, what to expect. Um, if you don't want to dedicate the, the total time for this whole video, that's absolutely fine. Um, I re definitely recommend learning the initial concepts and at least watching through one of the solves, but I will be doing two just to sort of make sure I hit everything that needs to be hit. And for people who want a little bit of extra, you know, examples, things like that. So what are tuples and pointing? Well, I'm going to go over the very basic concept just by doing some pencil marks, and then I'll be going over some slightly more concrete examples, and then of course we'll be going into an actual puzzle to solve. So, a, in general a tuple is when, I suppose I would define it as when the candidates for a group of cells within a large, so I guess group isn't a good term to use, so let me, let me say that group is either going to be a row, a column, or a box. So every cell in a group sees each other. And I'm using this word see, I'm going to be using that a lot. And so that means they affect each other. So what that means is if I have a one here, then none of the rest in the box can be a one, none of the rest in the row can be a one, none of the rest in the column can be one. So whatever group this one is in, the rest of the group can't be a one. So they all see this one. If I put a two here, well now this one and two share the row and the box. So these one and two are in the same group of row and box. And say this cell here is in the same group as the one or two because of the box. And so we'd say this cell sees both the one and the two and the one and the two see this cell. So that's what I mean by seeing in case that's confusing. So the, when cells in the same group are reduced to the same number of candidates as the number of cells, then the consequence is that nothing else, none of the other cells in that group can be any of those values. So I know that's a bit confusing to, to hear, but I wanted to give kind of the definition of a tuple. So for example, if I reduce these three cells to just one, two, three in some way, then that means that we can't put a one. Oh my goodness. Cat's knocking things over. Um, okay, so if I reduce these three cells to just one, two, or three, then the consequence of that is for the rest of the row, since they share a row, we can't put a one, two, or three. So for example, if I were to put a one right here, then that would obviously remove one as a possibility from these three cells. And so now between these three cells, I only have a two and a three to use. And so that, that breaks the puzzle. Like I can put a two here, oops, I can put a two here and a three here, but then what do I put here? So hopefully that's fairly uh, understandable. And so if I had this one, two, three here, I can't put a one, two, or three over here. So let's, for example, if I had this cell reduced to just one, two, three, and four, and then I have this one, two, three triple here, um, then this can't be one, two, or three, and so it can only be a four. And again, I'm going to go over some more concrete examples. So when we've reduced it to two, sorry, I'm in the wrong mode. So a one, two here, for example, we call it, that's a tuple, but we call it a pair, right? Just like you'd have a pair in poker or something, a pair of cards. So this would be a one, two pair. If I have one, two, three like this, this is a triple. And then if I do one, two, three, four, that's a quadruple. And so because just like a naked single, it's visible just from looking at the candidates, 
this would be a naked quadruple. Oops, didn't mean to do that. This here would be a naked triple. And this would be a naked double. Now for a triple, I could do something like uh, this here, where this is a 1, 3, this is a 1, 2, and this is a 1, 2, 3. And this is still a naked triple, because between these three cells, only 1, 2, and 3 are possible. And so now we still can't repeat 1, 2, 3 in the rest of the row. So that's still a triple. So that's a naked triple, naked quadruple. And we're not, we could do, we could go all the way up to um, oct tuple, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go over hiddens and I'll explain why we really only have to go up to quadruple. So just as I said, the next concept is a hidden. So just like we had hidden singles where the only only one cell left in say the row could be a particular value. If we reduce say two cells in a row to be two values, then that would so it if we reduce two values to only be available in the same two cells, even if other cells in that row, you know, or column or box, could have been uh, those values, so they're not naked, they're called a hidden, say, pair, or a hidden triple, or hidden quadruple. So for example, if I have, um, you know, every possibility here, but then Let's say I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm giving concrete examples later, so let's just, let's just do these like this. If somehow I've reduced one and two to not be available in all of these seven cells, well, I could call this a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine septuplet, right? But an easier way to describe that is here I've got a hidden one, two pair because one and two can only be in two spots in this row, and they're the same spot. So if I were to put anything other than a one or two in either of these, like if I were to put a three here, well now there's one and two are both hidden singles in this cell, which is obviously not possible. The cell can't be both a one and a two. So I would be, you know, if, even if I picked one for here, now there's nowhere to put a two in this whole row. So if we find that a one and two can only be in two places, that means we can remove everything except one and two from those cells. And that's the same thing that would have happened if we were to discover this three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine septuplet, which removes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from all the other cells in the row, which has the same effect. So you can kind of think about it as however many cells are left in the row, for example, here we have nine left in the row, if you could either have a hidden double or a naked septuplet or a hidden triple, which would be a naked sextuplet, um, etc. So it's it's sort of the their inverse relationships. And so if we only ever want to talk about pairs, triples, and quadruples, we can do naked pairs, triples, and quadruples. And then instead of a naked quintuple, we'd call that a hidden uh, quadruple, right? And then a naked sextuplet would be a hidden triple, etc. And of course, so then a hidden single could also be described as a naked octuplet um, for, for a row that has nine left. But of course, if we don't have nine left, if say the, we knew that the nine were here, this is still a, a and, and then this were three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we don't have nines available here. This is still a hidden pair, but the remaining ones are a naked sextuplet because we have the two plus six equals eight relationship because we already have one of the, the cells filled. So keep that in mind when talking about terminology. I know we're getting deep into terminology here and I'll give some concrete examples uh, for these. But the next concept that I'm gonna talk about, and I know this, is, this might be a bit overloading, which is why I'm gonna go over everything first and then I'm gonna go through some concrete examples and then I'm gonna go through a solve. So the next thing is called pointing. So it, sometimes you'll hear of it as pointing pairs, uh, maybe a pointing tuple, I, I don't know. I, I just want to just generally call it pointing. Um, so in this case, let's say I've reduced ones to be in one of these two. And here I'm using the notation that I described at the, uh, near the end of um, my last lesson, which if you didn't watch the full lesson, you wouldn't have gotten that. But 
I'm going to go over it in more in detail when I do the solves today as well. But if I put, say I put 1, 2, 3 here in the center using center notation, that means this cell can be a 1, 2, or 3. It can't be anything else. But if I put it in the corner, that means that within this box, only these two cells can be a 1. So this could have happened, and again, I'll give better concrete examples later. But if I have a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here, then ones can't be here, ones can't be here, and then this one prevents the one from being here. So within this box, one is limited to just these two cells. So we're not going to worry about how that happened yet, but let's say we managed to do that. Well, that means that for the rest of this row, we can't put any ones, and that's called pointing. These two point at, if you kind of imagine, kind of like an arrowhead happening here, uh, maybe, maybe like, I don't know how to draw that. So we've got kind of an, an arrow pointing to the right. I know that's terrible. Um, but the idea is these, because they share the same row, so one is, this is based on the box, right? One can only be in two cells in this box. And if they were like, uh, like this, that wouldn't be very useful. But if they share the same row, or they share the same column in some way, then that's called pointing, and they point at the rest of the row, or in this example, they point at the rest of the column. And obviously everything's rotational in Sudoku. And so what that means is that these can't be a 1. Because if just think about it. If I were to put a 1 somewhere in this row, that would remove 1 as a possibility for these two cells. And so now I couldn't put a 1 in this box. And I must put a 1 in this box. So if I had, say, reduced this cell to a 1 or a 2, and I have these 1s pointing at it, this actually can't be a 1, and I know it's safe to put a 2 there. So very similarly to pointing, if I've, say, reduced two cells to be a 1, but I've done it not because of the box, like because of stuff looking into the box, but I've done it through some other way, which I'll go over later, that's called box line reduction. It's perfectly fine to also call it pointing, but what that means is because ones can only be here in this row, and both of those places are in the same box, I can't put a one in the rest of the box. So I can't put a one here, for example, or, or even here, right? I can't put a one in this box up here or here because that would remove these two from being a one, and because that came from the row, now there's nowhere to put a one in the whole row. So those are the four concepts I want to go over in this video. So just to list them again, we have naked tuples, which are going to be pairs, triples, and quadruples. We have hidden tuples, which are hidden pairs, hidden triples, and hidden quadruples. We have pointing, and we have box line reduction, which is very similar to pointing. So let's go over some examples. I'm going to pull up a few examples here. So. In this example, we have a few things going on. First, we have this box with 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9 filled. So we can pencil mark in the center 4, 5, 6. And what this means is that for these three cells, only 4, 5, and 6 are possible candidates for those cells. Okay? We also have this column with only four cells left in it. And we have 1, 2, 3, 7, 8. So we can have a 4, 5, 6, or 9 for the rest of this column. So for these cells in the column, each of the cells can be 4, 5, 6, or 9. And if we didn't know about tuples, then we would have to leave it here and try to solve the rest of the puzzle. But because we know about tuples, this 4, 5, 6 tells us that for the rest of the row, even though this 4, 5, 6 came from the box, right, because they share this row, for the rest of the row, I can't put a 4, 5, or 6. So this triple in the row prevents anywhere else in the row from being any of the numbers in this triple. So for example, if I were to put a 4 here, that removes a 4 from these three, and now I have 5 or 6 to place in three cells. Or another way to put it is, where do I put a 4 in this box? Well, I can't. So this can't be a 4, 5, or 6, and so that actually allows us to place this 9. And it's completely logical that a 9 would go here. So that's example one. That's using tuples in a way that, that's useful. Um, so I'm going to close this window, and I'm going to pull up example two. All right. So in this example, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate hidden triple. 
So th this is a triple, a hidden triple, and um, I'm going to demonstrate a nice way of finding that hidden triple. So if we were to look at this column, or sorry, this row, said the wrong word. If we look at this row one, we can have one, two, three, seven, eight, nine left. And normally I wouldn't even mark that. But we can see here there's a one, two, and three in this box. So these actually can't be a one, two, or three. So we could discover that this is actually a seven, eight, nine triple, which removes seven, eight, and nine from the rest of the row. But it may actually be easier to think about this as a hidden triple, sort of as a human, because we had to kind of fill these to figure that out. And I would not recommend filling cells that have six possibilities left, um, unless you're desperate. But what we can see is we have a one, two, three here. So we can sort of just see in our head, well, obviously these three cells can't be a one, two, or three. So what we can do is we can look at the rest of the row, and we can see that one, two, and three are not given in the rest of the row. We don't know where they are. And in addition to that, we only have three cells left to fill in this row. So we need a one, two, three in this row. They can't go here, and there's only three cells left in the row for them. So these have to be one, two, and three, and that's a hidden one, two, three triple. And we found that without filling any candidates ahead of time. And so now that we know this is one, two, three, we now have a one, two, three triple in the row, along with a given four, five, and six. So these can't be one, two, three, or four, five, and six, and so then that reduces to seven, eight, nine. And so we found it in a different way, but I think my argument here would be that when you're scanning the puzzle, it may end up easier to find it this way than to fill all the candidates and find it the other way. Because it might not end up as clean as, I, as in this example. So that was example two. Uh, hidden triple. So here's example three. So what's going on here? Well, just like before, I don't know why I would choose to do this, but I could fill in all the candidates for these cells. So for the box, we need one through eight, we just have nine in the box. But we have a one and a two looking up into here, so these can't be one and two. And we have a one and two looking up at here, so these could be one and two. So I could see a couple things with this. One is I could see that I have a four, five, six, seven, eight, or sorry, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight sextuplet, naked sextuplet in this box, which means that these can't be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was kind of a pain to find, right? We could also have seen, well, if we look, one and two can't be in these. So one and two is limited to two cells. So this is a one, this is a, hidden pair of one and two. So within that hidden pair, I can remove anything that isn't one or two. But I'd like to show you a better way to find this. We see that we have one and two looking up here. So these can't be one and two. And we have one and two looking up here. So these can't be one and two. So one and two are reduced to just two cells in this box. So I can just fill one, two like that. Or if you maybe didn't see that, maybe you were looking for hidden singles in the way we were before and using corner notation. So we might see, okay, this one looks up here and this one looks up here. We've ignored the twos. Maybe we didn't notice them yet. And so we corner mark ones into here. And then later we come around and we see, oh, well, two actually looks up into here and two looks up into here. So I'm gonna corner mark twos here as well. Now, as soon as I do that, I've corner marked ones and twos to the same two cells which means that I've actually found a hidden pair, and I can exchange that to be a one, two center mark and get rid of my corner marks, because that's a more powerful statement than corner marks. And so no matter how you want to find that, that that'll work. And so just, just to use some scratch space over here on the left, if I limited ones here and twos here and threes here like this, that also works as finding a hidden triple. You know, maybe they aren't lined up like that. Maybe I had reduced them like this with corner marks, no matter how you do it. Or maybe this didn't even have a one and this didn't even have a three, right? But ones, twos, and threes are still reduced to these three cells. So I can make these one, two, and three. And then of course this wouldn't be a one and this wouldn't be a three. And then I could get rid of these corner marks. Whoops, not the whole thing. Get rid of these corner marks. All right, just like that. So that is example three. Close that. And we will look at example four now. So this one, 
Well, if I were looking at this, um, there's a few things I might see, but maybe the first thing is that this row only has three cells left. And so it might as well fill in the center. And I get 189. And then I look and I see, okay, well, these can both be 189, so that's not so useful. But this one here, oh, it sees an 8 in its row, so I can get rid of 8. So now I see, okay, I've got 19 here and I've got 189 here. But later I'm looking around and I'm seeing, oh, I noticed this 1, and that's looking up into here. So 1 is reduced to 2 cells in this box. So I'm going to corner mark 1s in here. And now I remember my pointing lesson. I go, oh, wait, these 1s point at the rest of this row. And so I can't actually put a 1 here. 1 isn't a valid candidate here. And just to go over that again, if I were to put a 1 here, that removes both 1 corner marks here. So now I can't have 1s here, and I can't have 1s here, and so there's nowhere in the box to put a 1. So this cell can't be a 1, which means it must be a 9. And so now we found a 9 that we may not have if we hadn't known about pointing. All right. So one last example before we get into our solve, and it will be showing box line reduction, if you couldn't have guessed that. So for this example, we may look and look at this row here, and we can see that this one looks up into here, and this one looks up into here. So we may think about that and go, well, actually, that means that one must be in these two cells. And within this row, I've reduced one to these two. I haven't said anything about the box, and according to the box, one could go anywhere. But according to this row, the one has to be up here. So it's actually safe to corner mark ones up here, because for this row, we've reduced one to be in the same box. And by doing so, we've signified that one can't be anywhere else in the box, and that's box line reduction. So none of these can be ones. And now if we have a keen eye, we might see, well, now that means these two can't be a one. This one is seeing this cell, and this one is seeing this cell. So in this row, or in this column, we actually have a hidden single one right here. So the one has to go here. So by finding that, we've actually managed to place a one all the way down here, even though it didn't seem all that related. Another way we could have seen that, if we hadn't had such a keen eye about this stuff, is I might have seen these ones looking into this box and these ones looking into this box, which would prompt me to, at this point, automatically just corner mark the ones here. Like, there's no reason not to. We've reduced it to two in the box. It's going to be useful no matter what. And now what we see is that these ones and these ones line up. So I know the one is here or here, and I know the one is here or here. And so for columns, this is column five and six, for columns five and six, I know where both ones are. We know there's only two ones in all of column five and six. And one of them's gonna be here, and one of them's gonna be here, right? So I can't put any more ones in columns five or six, which means in this box, these can't be a one. So a, a quick way to sort of, without having to think about all that, is we've lined up these ones here already. These ones line up in boxes two and five. So in box eight, ones aren't allowed here. We can sort of recognize that pattern. And so because ones aren't allowed here, that leaves only here for a one. So either way, we found the same one. But you may not have noticed this hidden single, but it, you may notice this line up here, which will point us towards a hidden single. Or if, say, this four weren't here, it would point us towards another corner mark of ones in those two cells. So those are the examples. And now we're going to apply what we learned, and we are going to solve a puzzle. So if you'd like to try this puzzle yourself, it's going to be the first link in the description below. You can follow along. You can try it first, seeing if you can apply what we learned. But either way, or you can just watch this first one, <clears throat> however you want to do it. But either way, I'm going to get started on this puzzle. So I'm going to start in a, a bit of an unusual way, because I want to point out that you can right away start seeing some of these hidden tuples uh, without having done any marks at all. And that can often make the puzzle a lot easier to solve um, now that you have these sort of tuples called out. Now, normally I would recommend starting a Sudoku just by looking for hidden singles to start out with, because those are e very easy to spot, especially in a box. 
Um, and there are quite a few hidden singles in this puzzle that we could start out looking at. But I want, I want to show you that even before we find those, there are some nice uh, gems hidden in here in terms of hidden tuples. So the first one I'm going to point out is we have this 5, 6, and 8 up here in this box. And so what does this 5, 6, 8 do? Well, it should be obvious that it means that these can't be 5, 6, or 8. And we notice that the given, the rest of the givens in the row, in the, in the row, row three, also aren't five, six, or eight. So we still need a five, six, and eight in row three. But where do they go? Well, there's only three cells left that could take them in. And so all three of them must. So this is a hidden triple of five, six, eight. And we can look and we can see, okay, five is eliminated here, and five is eliminated here. And that actually gives us a five. So the question is, would we have seen that five anyway? Yes, we would have. These two fives look into here, and this five looks up here, and this five even looks in here. So even without that given seven, that would force a five here. But we found it this way, and there's no reason we shouldn't have. Um, and often this can actually call out um, hidden singles in, a, in a, a fun way to find them. Like The whole point is to have fun, right? So this is going to leave a pair. So just to go over that again, um, because this is a 6-8 pair, 6 and 8 can't be anywhere else in the row. So even ignoring the 6-8 up here, because we have the 6-8 pair, virtually we have only two values left to place into these two cells. So it's going to be a pair as well. And so we're missing a 3 and we're missing a 9. So that's going to be a 3-9 pair. Okay, so I want you to take a second and look to see, do you see anything else? Do you see any other hidden tuples? And it's okay if you don't, um, but I want to give you maybe a second to pause the video and see if you see any more. And I'll show you what I see after, we're, after uh, you're done pausing. So go ahead and pause. All right, so now that we're back, I will point out what I see here. So I'm seeing this um, 5, 2, 9, 3. Or if we want to say them in order, 2, 3, 5, 9. So those obviously can't be here. It's four numbers, they aren't given, and there's only four cells left. So this has to be two, three, five, and nine. And we already see here, this two sees these two, so those can't be two. Um, and then this five looks down here. This one can't be a nine, because of that nine. Uh, this can't be a five or a nine, because of the column. And this two, three sees down here. And so now what we have left is um, what Mark Goodliff uh, from Cracking the Cryptic would call a chocolate teapot quadruple. And it's a chocolate teapot because it's useless. It's not that useless, but it's not self-fulfillable, right? There's no double or triple inside there that'll give us one of the values. It's two values remaining in each one, and it's a unique set of two in each one, so we don't have any pairs. And so we're going to have to have something external come in and eventually give us um, what that, uh, it basically tell us what um, is resolved there. Okay, so now um, those were the uh, hidden tuples that I saw. Um, maybe you see some other ones, and you can feel free to go and do, do your own solve and, and do those. But I'm going to start looking for hidden singles now. So we have these two sevens that look into here, so that's a hidden single seven. Um, what else do we see? So we have a 4 looking up here, and this 4 looks over here. So 4 is in one of these two. Um, what else do we have? We have this 2 looking here, this 2 looking here. That's not, that's not helpful. Um, okay, we have this 4 here looks over here. So this must be a 4. And so this is a this is a triple. This is going to be a one six eight triple, and this one sees here. So now we actually have a six eight pair in this column, which could be useful. Um, I'm going to wait till we have a, a little bit more filled in before I see what this quadruple is, though, because um, I don't think it's going to be super fruitful to fill it right now. Um, just looking at what numbers look in, like we have these nines looking in. So nine is limited to here, for example, but. That's not going to be it filled. Um, 
This four looks down here, and these fours look down here, and this can't be a four, because that four. So this is a four. Um, this five now looks in here, and previously five was limited to these two, but now that we filled this four, um, this five and this five look in, this, that makes this a five. So now we should be able to finish off the rest of our quadruple. So this five sees this three, nine, two. Perfect. And of course this five looks over here and this five looks down, so that's a five. And we can finish off this row uh, with a, looks like a six. All right, this nine looks up here. We get a three and a nine. We're already getting so much use out of this six, eight that we saw here. Um, okay, uh, we also, what else can we see? This is gonna be a triple. So this is a two, four, seven triple. Uh, this two looks up here. This seven looks up here. This four looks up here. And we have another chocolate teapot triple. Um, should get resolved at some point though. Um, that or we just never solve the puzzle. <laughs> I assume we're going to end up solving this. So, okay. Um, three is looking up into here, and three can't be here because of this three. So three is now one of these two. Uh, these are both going to be triples, so I think it's, it's worth filling them just in case there's things looking in that we didn't notice. So this is going to be three, six, and nine. This three looks down, this nine looks down, this nine looks down. So we have a three, six pair, that makes this a nine. It's also a hidden single nine with these two nines looking down in. I'm just checking this three, six. I'm not seeing any threes or sixes up here. And then this is also a triple. So this is gonna be a one, seven, or eight. Um, this eight looks down here, this seven looks down here, this one looks down here. And we get another chocolate teapot. <laughs> gonna get a lot of those, I guess. All right, so we're doing pretty well on this bottom three rows, rows seven, eight, and nine. Um, just a little bit to resolve there. But we haven't done a whole lot at, on the top yet. I feel like there's probably more. Um, so what I'm looking at is these open spaces and see if we can push any values up into the extremes. So... Hmm. Okay, well, we have this column here, and it's, it's got four values left. Um, so let's see what those would be. One, six, eight is already, we already know that. What's the, what's the fourth one, a nine? Okay, so one, six, eight, nine. This isn't a six, eight, or nine. So. Just to go over that again, this column needs a 1, 6, 8, or 9 just because of the givens. And we have a 6, 8, and 9 here. So this is actually hit, uh, a, a naked single uh, 1, not hidden, naked. That 1 sees down here. That makes a 6, 8 pair, or another way to put it is this is a hidden single 1. Uh, we got a lot of 6, 8s happening here. Um, the, there's two left in the, oh, sorry, three left in this column. It was uh, 6, 8, and 9. So we can put that. Um, this can't be a 9, so actually we have a hidden single 9 here that goes right here. Um, just looking at 9s to see if they're finished. We, we need a 9 in this box still. And sure enough, it's right here. And I believe that finishes them. Yeah, we have 9s, 9s, 9s. Okay, 9s are done. Um, I believe maybe... Okay, 3s aren't quite done. In fact... This three looks over here, putting a three in one of these two, which then looks up into here, putting a three in one of these two. That's convenient. Um, threes look down here. Threes in one of these, oh, we have this three is here as well. So threes in one of these two. So we have kind of these threes lined up. Um, oh, here's where we can use our pointing. So. Remember, we, we did limit threes to these two in this box. And so this can't be a three because these point at it. So this is not a three. This is a three. And this row now needs two, four, and seven. And neither of these can be seven from these two sevens. So this is a seven. And this is a two or four, but it sees a two. So this is four. 
two, seven, four. Uh, this seven looks down and completes the other chocolate teapot. Um, two values left here is a one and a four. This one here shows us the order. Two values left here is a five and an eight, which does not look resolved yet. Um, these three for the column or for the column or the box, we've got two, three, and uh, six. This isn't a two, this isn't a three. All right, I don't think that's resolved yet. We're in the home stretch though. So there's three left in this box. Uh, it's gonna be a two, six, or eight. And the two C's up here. So that's a six, eight pair. So that's a two. Um, what else do we have? Um, here, th this should be fillable inable. So we have one, two, three, we need a four. We have five, six, seven, and the, the eight from the six, eight, and a nine. So this is a four. Um, we need two, six, two, six, eight, what else? Oh, one, one. So we need a one in this row. This one sees here, and these two can't be ones. If we trust our pencil marks, we also have these two ones just to show that. So ones can't be there. So this is a hidden single one. Um, that leaves two, six, eight here. Can't be a two. So we have a six, eight pair. That places the two. Um, so now this can't be a two. So we can get rid of these corner marks. That's a three, six pair. Um, still not resolvable. This is three, six, eight. Don't think that can be resolved either. Um, looking at fives here, fives are limited to these two. Um, three left in this column. We need a one. So the one sees here, so this is a one. Two left in this column is a four and a six. The four sees here, so this is six, four. The six sees here, three, six. The three removes our corner mark, so we can just immediately place a three. That made a six, eight pair. Um, I think we have all, all our, no, we need these three still. Um, oh, this six that we placed sees this, so this is eight, six. Is this gonna get all our six eights? I think it will. All right, that's a six. Um, this is a three eight pair for the box. Um, ah, we have this eight, so this is five eight. Um, that places this five. We have a six, so this is three six, eight, three, eight. These should be two and seven. And so that's how you solve the first one. So as you can see, it was significantly more difficult than the uh, previous videos, uh, hidden single only puzzles, and that's not surprising. Um, and something interesting to point out here is that being able to solve these using the, the tuples and the pointing, you should be able to solve any quote unquote hard puzzle. Now, people have added more terms later, like diabolic or things like that, which you have to use uh, more advanced strategies, which we'll go over in our next video. At least we'll start doing so. Um, but if it's labeled hard, like the New York Times hard puzzle, it's probably going to be like this one, where you're looking for you know, hidden triples, hidden quadruples, things like that. You're looking for pointing pairs. You're looking just to be careful about finding your naked pairs and triples. And you should be able to solve them. So like I said, you're feel free. If you don't want to watch another one of these solves, this is a good time to, to stop the video. I obviously encourage you to watch the second solve. But if you don't want to, uh, keep in mind that below I, I have a pack of 20 puzzles, including this one, so 19 more, that are very similar to this one, where you're going to need to use 
more than just finding hidden singles to solve it. You're going to need to use what we learned with finding, you know, triples, hidden tuples, hidden tuples, pointing pairs, and box line reduction. Um, some combination of those to solve. And they'll all be similar to this difficulty. So it's really good to practice them. I'd say that you know you're proficient with it if it takes you between you know 10 to 15 minutes to solve the puzzles, it, or less, obviously. But um, I would expect about that time range. If you're, if you're taking a long time to solve them, that just means you need more practice, and there's plenty more puzzles for you to try. So if you want to, to see me solve another one, I'm about to do that now. Um, otherwise, um, please, um, if you want to see more videos in this series, it's good to subscribe so that you'll catch when I post the next one. All right, so now this is the second puzzle. And again, if you will check the uh, description below, you'll find a link where you can try this yourself. Definitely recommend giving it a shot before watching my solve. Um, but either way, you're welcome to watch this, or if you get stuck, you can watch my solve and then get yourself unstuck. But either way, I'm going to get started, and I'm going to start by pointing out something which may or may not be obvious, which is there are no given ones in this puzzle. So the question is, how are we going to get any ones at all? Well, the most obvious way to get a one is to find a naked single one. So we need to find a cell that sees all through two through nine, and then we can place a one in them. Uh, that one should hopefully propagate from there. Um, it's also somewhat possible to find a tuple that involves a one, which then uh, eliminates a one from the rest of its group. So those are the things we want to look out for. We can also eliminate a one from individual cells by finding hiddens. So obviously a hidden single is going to not be a one. It'll be whatever the hidden single is. But even a hidden tuple, well, if it doesn't involve a one, then that hidden tuple can eliminate the one from those cells. So these are the kinds of things we're going to have to look for, uh, especially on this puzzle. So I'm going to start by looking for any kinds of hiddens, especially hidden singles, um, as I would always. So uh, just looking at this puzzle, I, uh, the first hidden single I see is these sevens. So we can, these sevens see into here, this seven sees here. So we can place this seven. And um, we're just going to mark what we see. So this five looks into here, this five looks here, so there's fives here. So now these fives look over, this five looks over, so we... I am going to mark this, that we have a five up here somewhere. Um, I think we're going to have to lean on our corner marks quite a bit here, instead of doing a lot of center marks. Um, I think I will center mark anywhere that I see that looks like it's limited to two or three values, because those could become a naked single. We want to find those as soon as possible. Um, with that said, we have these sixes here, so I'm going to place a six up here. Um, I have these twos, so this two looks here and here, so that's another hidden single two. And th this pattern's really interesting. Um, for multiple reasons, but the most important one here is if we have anything in the row or the column that isn't one of these 2759 givens, then that's going to be eliminated from three out of the five cells. And so then that could become at least a, a, a corner mark, if not a hidden single. And so you probably saw it here. We have this four eliminating from these three. So we can corner mark fours here. So those fours are going to look down here. Yep, so we can corner mark fours, and they also look up here. So four is going to be here somewhere. I'm not going to mark that. That's too much. Um, but we'll keep that in mind when we get one of these fours that we should immediately uh, pair it with this. Um, so let's see. We have... this four here with these four. So four somewhere here. I'm not going to necessarily mark that. Um, this column here is interesting. So if you look at where nine can go, this can't be a nine and this can't be a nine because of these two nines. So we actually limited nine for the column to these two. And so this is our first box line reduction where these nines eliminate a nine from happening 
in any of the rest of these cells. So that's that's quite good. Um, we'll have to remember that when we go to to investigate these cells. Um, okay, so this cell here is quite limited. It obviously can be a one, but it can't be two, three, four. It can be five, which we actually had corner marked there. Uh, it can't be six, seven, eight, or nine. And the seven's in the box, if you see. So this is a one or a five. So um, that could become a naked single if we put a five anywhere else in in here or up here. Um, so we should pay special attention to fives as well. Um, actually, with that said, so we have these this fives here are looking here. This five, so basically, if five's going to be in this box, it's one of these three. Um, this five is looking over this way. This five is looking this way. So if we look at this, um, and sorry, these fives look here, right? Oh, I, I mixed up my highlighting, but these can't be fives. Here, this can't be five, and here, this can't be five. So if we look at column one, um, this is the only place in the column for a five. This is a hidden single five. So now with that five placed, I can, I can actually place the one here. Um, so we have these fives. Does this five do anything else for us? Not that I'm seeing. Um, Looking at fours again. Where do we have fours? Not seeing anything yet with that. Um, these nines look in to corner mark nines here. Just seeing what I see here. Uh, fives are here. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to mark that. Um Okay, let's see what else we see. So we now have fours limited to these two and I am going to mark that. So we kind of have these fours like this, which isn't resolved yet, but hopefully we will be able to um in fact let's let's check this row out so um because there's four left so we need a two a four a seven and a nine so this one can't be seven this one can't be four and i'm not seeing two seven or nine anywhere this one, ah, two, seven, and nine. So this one's a four. So let's eliminate four from those. And so I that makes this a four as well. Okay, so we have three left in this column. That's a one, a six, and nine, it looks like. So this isn't a one. This isn't a nine. This can be any of them. Okay, so let's see what's next. Did getting this four do anything else for me? Um, threes, threes here or here? Six and four are already in the row. Okay. Um, what else do we see? Ah, oh, this can't be a two. Sorry for missing that. These twos look up here. These corner marks are twos. These fours look up here. And corner mark fours here. Um, two, four. Uh, 
Okay, so here's a here's a hidden pair with two four. So two four can't be here. And these two fours, which we just saw, look up look up to here. So there's only two cells left to take two and four, so they must. So that's two and four, so this isn't a six. Um, not seeing those get resolved by anything yet. Um, fours in general, are these three? Okay, let's keep going. So where does... Okay, yeah, so we know in this box that 9 is here or here, which means 9 can't be in these two because of the box line reduction. In fact, I should remove this 9 as well. Um, but anyway, back to my point, 9 can't be in these two because of the box line reduction. Um, and then also we have these two 9s seeing down to these two. So we actually have a hidden single 9 right here. So that's going to give us the 9 and the 5. And so what does this 5 give us? The 5 looks up here, this 5 looks here, so we actually get a 5 here. Um, these 5s look over here, so we get this 5. Are we going to finish the 5s? I believe a 5 is here. And 5 is here. So I think we just finished the 5s. Awesome. Um, we also placed a 9, but that was... Kind of inevitable. We do have two left in this column though, so we need a one and a two. Not eliminated yet. Okay, so twos in this box are limited to here. That doesn't really give me much. Okay, so what's next? There's four left in this box. So let's see what those are. That's one, two, eight, and nine. So these aren't two, and this isn't two. So we, I should have seen that hidden two there, um, but I did not until I filled it. Um, this isn't nine, and I believe these can all be one, eight, nine. I'm scanning. Okay. I am wondering about finding more naked singles. Like th this one sees a lot of digits. Um, let's just do the whole box though, because there's four left. So we need a one, three, four, and six. Six isn't here. So we actually have a six in one of these two. Um, one, three, so this sees a four. Does it see a three? Oh, it sees a one actually. So this is a three. So no more three in the box. One and four. So that means this is also one and four. And so that means this is one, four, six, eight in the row. That looks right. Might as well mark that. Don't like putting four in the center, but I feel like we're getting close to finishing this puzzle, actually, whether or not it looks like it. Um, three left in this column is six, seven, eight. So that's not an eight. So we actually have eight limited down here. Um, so eight's up here, because the, these eights look up here, and then this eight sees here, this eight sees here. So eight's up here. Um, this isn't a six or a seven, so actually this is the eight. Um, Kind of ahead of myself with noticing things. Um, two left in this row, so we need a one or a three. There's a three in the box, we get another one. So we got the one and the three. I'm just looking at the consequences of those. This isn't a one. So a one is in one of these two. So we have ones looking up here and here. Oh, I could have seen that here. This one eliminates this two. We also get a seven. This two sees a one. We're at the point where we're getting more than we can uh, react to immediately. This is an eight, one. I can get rid of these nine corner marks as well. 
uh, we have the eight, so this is nine, eight. Nine's gonna go up here. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Okay, this is, we have the one. So this is a six, four, eight. Um, the six is the nine and the one. Yeah, this is this is the home stretch. Um, I have an extra digit. Yeah, this is seven. So this is a nine, this is a two. That's no longer a two. This is six or, oh, this is not six or seven. This never could have been seven. This is a six, seven. Um, three. We need a one and a seven. That's not resolved yet. This one four is, okay, so I had a four corner marked and I took that mark. So yes, that's true. This is a four. Um, this is going to be a triple one, uh, three, and six. So this isn't six. Really? Okay, this isn't three. Oh, we got the four, so this is a one. This is a triple, so this is six, eight, and nine. That's not an eight, that's not a nine. Still not resolved. These two are a pair for the column, so we need a two. So this is the two and this is the nine. So that means this is the nine. Get rid of those corner eights. Uh, we need, oh, we have the two here. So this is the two, four. Um, this is a four. One, six, seven. This isn't one, so this is six or seven. This pair is six or seven. Six, seven pair at the top gives us this eight, the six, seven, six, seven. One, seven, six. This is one, three, not resolved. This is three or what else, six? I have this six, so this is three, six, one, three. And just two more to go. I need a one and I need a eight. So there you go. That is how you solve the second puzzle. So again, um, feel free to review these solves if you want to be reminded how to find those. I, as I said, as I predicted, that this puzzle needed a lot of hiddens to, to solve. And I think there was a clutch naked single one here and there was a naked single three here, um, which may, you know, like I said, naked singles are easy for computers to spot, not so easy for humans to spot. So working on that is great. And you can go back to see how I spotted that, where um, for this one, I actually, I think I had a one five pair for, or one five candidate for a little bit, because I noticed there were a lot of digits seen. This one, I actually just saw from it being blank that there were quite a few digits just above and below it in its box. So I suspected there were, um, that that could have been a naked single. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how you solve those two puzzles. Feel free to check out the rest of the 18. Um, should bide you for quite a while um, if you do a couple every day. Um, also feel free to watch any of the other videos on my channel and see if you can solve those. And uh, I do go over the rules because they often have extra rules on them because they they're variants of sudoku and that that really keeps things interesting and i feel like with the knowledge you gained here about triples and pointings you should be able to do a good number of them yourself and you may learn something from watching those videos as well that you didn't know so with that i hope you enjoyed this lesson hope you learned something from it and until next time, thanks for watching.